Part three, we are live. This is 2OF Entertainment. As they say back. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Canadian Art Today. And your host there, Paul Constable. Yeah, so, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good and I must tell you right off the bat, I the guest, I've seen his work. But because he's smoking a cigar, I already love the guest. And the fact that he looks like Santa Claus, even better. So hand off if you're happy. Yeah, well, we Paul, have a, don't move, don't move your mic. Don't move we your have mic. Yeah, there's this big snowstorm. So uh so yeah, so Santa we're Claus all the way from all the way from the North Pole. We have Santa Claus. <laughs> and if you're a Harry Potter fan, all the way from wherever they, they are. He whatever. he could have good he could have been a good stand-in and yeah, uh, there you go. some of those pieces. But yeah, we we've got oh, what an artist we have tonight today. It's uh you know most artists they kind of they they squeeze paint out of the tube, right? They paint, they draw, they use they buy materials to produce their work. Um and then you look around that we are we are at an age of, of affluence. We have we throw away a ton of stuff. Right. Um, I mean stuff that's worn out, maybe still not not shiny anymore. We get rid of it, and then metal products and plastics, and I mean, we have consumer issues. It's like right. just buy something new, right? Get rid of it, can't afford to fix it, or it's not worth fixing, throw it away. Now this happens in all industries, and um we have a folk artist, and I'll call him probably more of a sculptor, and he's working with found materials. So we 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 look at things that are made from universal joints from tractors and trucks mm -hmm. and utensils from kitchens and things like that that you can make. His most of the stuff he has is a little heavier um, workings from in metal. So right. they're from vehicles and from imp farm implements and different things that. This, that's how he salvages those things. They end up going to the, the smelter at some point. Otherwise, you might right. these things get a second life, which is really cool. You have right. to see what this man makes from this stuff. Um, we'll bring uh, Rick in. Let's we'll bring him in. So, And he's not, he doesn't have his reindeer, kids. So no reindeer. Naughty nights <laughs> list, so we're doing good. Rick, welcome to the show. Um, I'm going to let you two have, have at it, and I'll see you at the end. And everybody enjoy. His, his stuff is absolutely gorgeous. Enjoy your show. Enjoy your interview. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good day to you, sir. How are you doing? Not bad, man. My yeah. Well, I yeah, I'm there too <laughs> a little bit. You know, a bit of a snowstorm hanging around, but uh, we're uh, I'm just honkering down in the studio later. Lost my background. The uh, stream yard uh, went and did an upgrade overnight somehow, and I can't find any of my backgrounds. I pop in, so here's a downstairs office for my background anyway you have a great background there your gallery i can see that stuff on the wall and uh things that are we're going to tell people about in our show here um we always kind of talk about this the art journey i said how, how long have you how long have you been producing sculpture from found materials uh, about 25 years now about 25 and where, where were you before this like what what made you want to become this this sculptor from found material well i actually started out with a poet it's a poet um, a poet back in the 60s really i went my way through poetry and then i did some painting and some various other photography tried a few others and late 90s i started playing with metal and found my home yeah no, for sure, for sure. So, you do you write a little bit of poetry? Do you write anything about your work while you're, what are you doing? No, stuff? I haven't done any other than other than a, a few um, love poems, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, I haven't written a poem for years, but I did. I did write some essays in that. Oh, up to about uh, four or five years ago. Yeah. So you live in a small community in Saskatchewan. So access to this found material is, is it kind of everywhere or where, where how where do you find this stuff? well i've been doing this so long that i have 
I just keep buying more land to put my metal on. <laughs> I have, um, oh, I would say 25 tons of steel out here. Yeah. I bought at auctions and I bought, you know, I've had people just drop it off. When I first started out in the late 90s, I was, my studio was in Saskatoon in, um, just off 20th Street on Avenue P. And all I did for, for materials then was walk around the back alleys every morning and pick up converted bicycles and pull, pull bits and pieces out of bins. Yeah. So yeah. at that point in time, I made a lot of stuff out of bicycles. <laughs> what, uh, what kind of stuff did you make out of them? Like out of a bike? You had, I know you made a dog. So you had a famous, you're famous for your bike dogs. Yeah, my ca cats and dogs and chickens and... Yeah, I, I I always remember hearing a story. There was uh, you're turning into folklore now a little bit. So here uh, some stories about people that have brought you a, a family bicycle that was say a father or somebody's father, and they needed it, didn't want to throw the bike out or sell it. But they said, Rick, could you make something out of this for me, right? So have you done a couple of those types of things? I've done three of those now. Yeah. Yeah, they're nice. They're really nice keepsakes. I think I'm going to get Stephen to load up the first image here. There we go. Look at that. Yeah, it's it's a beauty. I cleaned up the background so we have, uh, you know, we have these beautiful things that you make. So we're going to go through a whole series of these, uh, like different types of tractors and, I guess, transportation vehicles. Do they actually move? Like if you roll them on the floor, on the on the, on the table? Some do, some don't. Depends on how good a day I'm having when I'm building them. <laughs> so yeah. Some have wheels that actually steer. Some have moving parts on them. The bigger ones. Most yeah. of the stuff here is going to be pretty much non-moving because the smaller it is, the harder it is to uh, make uh, make things turn. Right. So, and part of this is, I guess, some of these are kind of scale to size. Are they not? Uh, when you're doing those, are these to scale? Some of these, like this, is a steam uh, tractor. I've hard for something like that to be because it's it's not really designed after anything else. It's more a product of my mind. It's representative of an old, of an old steam engine, but not of a particular one. Right. So, so when you to scale in, in so much as that would be roughly the scale of a steam engine, or at least right. something. So this one is about thirteen inches long. Um, what would that weigh? Three four pounds, like um, at least. Yeah, maybe four or five. Yeah. So they're all made of, like, what intrigues me is they're made out of all types of gear races and uh, gears and pulleys. and <laughs> little well, That particular one, uh, the tank on it, I believe, is a piece of an oxygen tank. The pulleys and the, I just assorted pulleys and stuff that I found. Yeah. The uh, stack on it is a tire, a tire iron. Oh, the end off of one. Yeah, cool. And that's all I that's all I can recognize. I built that quite a while ago. Yeah, no, it's uh, by and it's available. That's what the thing is. This thing is available. So, so what we're showing here today will be um, part of a show that's going online here on Thursday on Artists in Canada. So Rick's having a solo show. So all these products are available, and. Uh, but I just love this tractor. I mean, I, I, I love that you didn't paint it. I love that you've left the patina there. Uh, it, it just has that old John Deere green look about it a little bit, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. And uh, these things would look lovely on a corporate desk. They just, you know, they, it brings you right back to the land. Like if you had a, a rural background or a grandfather or great grandfather that had a, that had steam power on the land. And uh, so, so we'll go through some of these. This this is a beautiful little tractor. I just love it. So I just say, what kind of, what's happening for the type of wheels that are in the back? I see pulleys in the front for the front wheels. The, uh, what process do you go through to get to this stage? Do you find the wheels and you look at this and you said, this will make that and you put them in a box and then one day you go back to it? Or how, how does that work? A lot of that goes on. All round stuff gets sorted into a pile of round stuff. Yeah. And I just pick out stuff that's uh, the right sizes and start building. 
Yeah. So what's your what's your love for machinery? Where where does that come from? Like I know you do new do some live like some big birds and different things, but uh, we'll get into some of those. But uh, you seem to be doing. There's a real love of machinery and implements. I guess that you've been working on for the last number of years. Well, I grew up for I grew up in a farming just west of Saskatoon. That yeah. particular tractor's much similar to the one that I use out here. So I use a 9N Ford out here with a three-point hitch. Um, I like the old machinery. I always have. I, I enjoyed working on it. I enjoyed using it when I was younger. Yeah. It's classic stuff, and it doesn't need a circuit board. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I can fix it with a hammer. You could, Yeah, a hammer and a screwdriver, and, uh, and away you go. Actually, you're just – so most – all the stuff is welded material. And do you, do you find it has some issues about welding certain types of material together? Is it difficult? So some stuff welds better than others, or I'm having a lot of trouble hearing you. Okay, you get your volume turned up a bit there. Always, always. Okay, well, we'll we'll continue. I'm talking as loud as I can, but I'll move a bit closer. The I guess I'm uh, you know uh, I could have lost my. My, my thought there a little bit but i'm just trying to think i'm, I'm just trying to think of the uh the, the process background noise over top yeah it's coming from you i think i don't know what where this background noise is coming from but you gotta, we've had that happen before and it uh, i can't remember it ended up that the um the headset was required to do it but we will uh we'll continue here but uh Anyway, I, I love this little tractor. I just, I just the process of welding different types of material together. Like cast is probably nasty to weld to anything. Cast is always a problem. Yeah. Um, I try and support cast sometimes with a, uh, a bolter with a uh, a rivet to hold it in place. Right. Yeah. To, well, you, to, yeah. to not stress the weld. Yeah. No, it's uh, just the nature of that material. Yeah, it's it, it's it's just hard to weld. Right, and I'm not a great welder. <laughs> You've welded a lot of stuff. You've gone through a, a lot of rod, I'm sure. Oh yeah, yeah. So these ones are a bit of gear races for wheels. Uh, the front wheel, though, is that is that a wood wheel? No, it's plastic. Um, I think it's off a roller skate. Oh. Okay, this I guess this is uh, one of the ones where you're actually marrying two different substrates. Before all the other stuff seemed to be metal. Yeah, and now, yeah, and, and now you're kind of um, pulling materials together. Yeah, and some of my newer stuff and my bigger stuff, like uh, there's rubber tires on some of it now. And okay, yeah. so your bigger but, stuff, your bigger stuff being what kind of sculpture? Uh, well, so from where I'm sitting, I've got a. It's a five foot long chopped and channel thirty two coupe. Oh, okay, vehicle like a large. Yeah. large and I've got a, outside, I've got a tow truck that's a little bit longer, and some right. bigger tractors that actually have uh, uh, rubber wheels on them, and that. It's just because I happen to find a bunch of rubber wheels. <laughs> you work with what you find and what you get, I guess. So yeah, I, yeah. For the most part, everything I build, I build from just you know, I start with something and build around it yeah let, let people know that uh, rick here has built a sculpture garden um in beside his property um in arlee saskatchewan so it's one of those things uh, it's one of the things to do put it on your to-do list uh, in the summertime when you want to go for a ride and come out to see his sculpture garden so is that where some of your bigger pieces are is in your sculpture garden Can you hear me, Rick? You got, we have a, we're having a sound issue. Can you hear me, Rick? If I went to headphones, would it help? Um, probably it would help, but uh, you can't hear me though, right? That's the problem. You can't hear me? Give me half a second. I'll run and get a set of headphones. Okay. Can't hear you. I can't hear you. Yeah. I said, this is why you got to love the live stuff. Oh, well, it's okay. 
It's okay. There you At go. Least we, we have a we have an issue, and we're gonna solve them. Yeah, the we didn't have a sound issue when we did our test. Earlier. And uh, do you have some of you have some of his work on your desk, right? Is that what you showed me earlier? Show Let's show some of his work while we're waiting for him. There you go. This That's beautiful. beautiful. Beautiful piece of uh, crow. I can yeah. call it a crow or maybe a raven. Uh, yeah. Nature made from a uh, universal joint. We're talking yeah. about cast, and this is a cast piece right here yeah. where he's welded the, and put the things together so you get tines from a fork become the feet. So yeah. very cool. He sits in my in a bit of a in our living room area on a on a on a commode. Cool. I have, I have another one here. Another really funky bird. He's, Very cool. Looks like a pelican. He has kind of a pelican look about him, but he's kind yeah. of like Dr. Susie a little bit. I was so going to say, but very beautiful. <laughs> Again, another smaller universal joint put in here. But these are these are from um, a moor, which cuts grass. Okay. Uh, it's far, yeah, the blade goes in between and cuts the grass, and they got a whole bunch of these little tines that, that go along. Cool. They're all in a, in a, on a long cutting bar. Right. But they become really neat looking beaks. You can see the eye, the look, the imp of where an eye would be almost here right. in the beak. So it's, uh, and again, he's got these, these cool little we'll see. Yeah. garden type Very forks cool. used for, for creating these products with, they just, but the thing is when you have a vision like this, it's special, right? You yeah. go and you, you can find things that can be used for something else. And you see other things in things that were intended for some other purpose. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and you can pick these things up and they're basically just by, if you buy them, they're by weight or by free. Yeah. They come and get them. But they become magic when you when you get the right guy who puts them together. I mean, it's sort of like buying a, a tube of paint. It means right. nothing to you. It's a tube of paint, costs you $20. But when you take that product and produce a beautiful painting from it, and has value well this is this is his paint is uh, the metal and uh we're still waiting for him to be found find his headset but uh, i think he's good we're gonna we're gonna come back and see rick you ready to go yeah the headset doesn't seem to want to pick up when you were talking there i could hear you perfectly <clears throat> okay well are you fine now yeah sounds good now wow <laughs> Just an anomaly. Well, we'll continue. I mean, it was great to show your your stuff. And this stuff I, is part of my collection of, of your stuff. I've collected your stuff for a number of years. And I, I have other stuff I can't get to. It's in my studio because of the snow. <laughs> I can't I have to <laughs> dig my I literally have to dig my way out. It's blown in around the garden. Oh. No. <laughs> You're in Saskatchewan. It blew in around my garden door, so I can't get out. But uh, we'll move on here. Yeah. So again, another farm implement. So this is a uh, is a is it a baler? Bullhead uh, combine. Bullhead combine. I should have known that. Had the bar has the green shoot on it. Yeah. So did this have a tractor that it hooked up on? Yeah, actually, the tractor you showed previously is the one that fits it. Oh, cool. So it is. A, it could be a pair for somebody on a desk. Yeah. yeah. You know these are, these are lovely things. Like if you have a farm background, a rural background, to have these little keepsakes that they kind of remind me of the. Uh, uh, they're a larger scale, the matchbox. Do you remember the matchbox toys? Oh, heavens, yes. Yeah, all those little beautiful English trucks and cars and stuff. They were, it was, what a company uh, that made these replicas of steam engines and things. And, but when you can make something from your mind about what it is and out of something that was completely different, you say, well, that look, that could be a chute and that one could be a wheel. And I think those, that becomes your paint. That's what I was just saying. Like it becomes a, uh, your your medium of, of choice, I guess, and and a welder, of course. This is a gorgeous little piece. So here we are incorporating uh, chain. So is this chain from a chainsaw? No, that's a roller chain. Probably uh, that looks like it might even be a uh, a timing chain. Ah, okay, from a vehicle. Yeah, or a roller chain off some people uh, off some implement. You know what? What is really neat is that you just look at that and you can say, "Yeah, it's a bulldozer." I mean, if you threw it all on the desk in a pile, you couldn't say, "What? What are you going to make out of that today?" And you think, "Okay, it's got a track, maybe something with a track." And then you find out how to make a blade, 
And uh, so is that how you kind of, your mind kind of works? I mean, you just, I'm looking for something. I've got it half built, but I'm looking for something that'll be a blade or something. I need a, you know, something to finish that. Do you have them? Do you have a bunch of them on the go at, excuse me, at the same time? In the winter time, I'll probably have seven or eight on the go. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah. I'll, well, when you until you... I find something appropriate to finish it with, or right, you know, the right size seat to put on it, or I think it's um, being able to walk through, uh, uh, I guess, a pile of things that are in similar piles i guess i'll call it that and you kind of or boxes and you see you're looking for something they inspire ideas i think they kind of spark you as to oh this could make that could make it cool bird put it off to the left that kind of stuff or do you are you more concentrated on i guess farm implements and things like that at them at the time being or are you finished with these kind of things or are you moving on from it or well, i'm not moving on from the farm implements at all i really enjoy them um i have and the reason i have the sculpture park is uh i have started doing life-size figures i have four, oh, cool. three band members uh a guitar player was six foot six a violinist and a uh, banjo player and then i have a woman sitting on a park bench breastfeeding a child out in the among some other bigger stuff that i've done over the, the last few years I won't ask what you made her. <laughs> I won't ask what you made her out of doing that. But anyway, uh, that would be cool. Maybe we have you we'll kind of have you back here, uh, maybe in the summer in the park, and you could do uh, kind of a walkthrough. That would be very cool for people to see what you, how your park's coming along. Is that still part of your things to keep it going and add we're, more to it? We're, we're hoping um, my the gallery. The reason I have the gallery is because I decided not to to leave the art circuit you know the art arts and craft show circuit and decided to pull myself out of gal out of the uh, commercial galleries because i just don't want to i wanted to stay home so i built the gallery or opened the galleries just to store my stuff and sell what i could and then the the park um it came up when i decided to build up build bigger stuff and i needed a place to store it right we're now at a point where my galleries takes up half my house and I want my house back. <laughs> so we're looking at a new gallery in the spring, we're hoping. And um, the park itself, depending on where we put the new gallery, the park will still stay in our lead, but it may move into another another couple of lots that I own. Okay. I, the, the park will probably always stay. The worst, worst case scenario, I, I just find that I can't maintain the gallery anymore. Yeah. No, but it's an expensive, you know, it, it costs a lot of time and money to to, uh, to maintain all of this. And I'm finding it's detrimental to the time I want to spend making art. Yeah. Yeah. No, very true. You know, there's a, there's, there's a point that an artist has to make uh, choices. And it's good that you're able to do that and still have your independence. Here we got a forklift on this one here. Again, it's very representational of a forklift, you know. Does is this a solid piece? Does is there anything move on this one at all? No, yeah. Yeah, she's solid and heavy. And heavy, yeah. <laughs> Good old paperweight. You know, it's it's one yeah, of those. Put your paper down. Well, you know, we have people, there's lots of people looking, like there's construction people, people that understand this kind of equipment. And uh they don't, you know, maybe they they you know have something, I guess, in remembrance of it. And I think a lot of that comes back to that people are wanting things yeah hold the paper down on the table <laughs> this one would hold the paper down on your desk from the wind blowing away that one would hold your desk down you know <laughs> or but uh yeah now these are cool there's a we've got a few of these things coming up your love of motorcycles and uh they're very this one feels a little art, art deco y to me i mean it feels very cool very minimalist in, in, yeah. in, in, in the sense of it. And it's 19 inches long. So it's a beautiful piece. It could sit on a shelf. It just looks gorgeous. I mean, it's like, uh, it implies a bike. It implies speed. It has, it's not, it doesn't feel clunky. doesn't feel, I mean, it's got a, probably a little bit of weight to it because it's 19 inches long. 
but it's not going to tip over and it's a gorgeous piece and uh can you tell us a little bit about i guess the, the motor is what are they those uh bolts a couple of square headed bolts oh, square headed bolts um uh, i got probably a two gallon two gallons of them stripping stripping some old industrial equipment from a wood shop okay uh a lot of the gears and that you see came from that there was a bunch of old industrial equipment that uh, they were getting rid of and they were gonna, just going to scrap it out and i got to go in and clean out before they did and i ended up with all these great little square headed bolts that work great for both well for the like that's a, a v twin out yeah we'll call it a harley motor but it could be it could be in any, any v twin <laughs> Um, and I use the same one on like I do in line fours and on bikes and that. But yeah, they were a great little find. Yeah. So is that kind of the joy when you when you find a, a stash that is just magic? Like you find that I oh I can use like eighty percent of this stuff? Like you, Oh yeah. Yeah. Otherwise you end up with a grab bag and you say I can use this, but boy, I have to take everything and I don't really want everything, but <laughs> they say no, you have to take it all. <laughs> That's okay. It'll all, it, we'll, we'll find a place for it someday. It's all weight. It all adds up. So you said you you have a lot of maybe customers or people that know that you do things. Like, did they come by and drop stuff off to you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I have a, quite, quite a few people that regularly drop stuff off. And I have, you know, I'll come home or I'll come out of the shop one day and there'll just be a pile of steel in front of my, in my front yard. <laughs> it drop off. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's so generous of them. I mean, really, it's, it's really a love. It's actually a love. It's it's a love of what you do, and they want to, I guess, it's it's a way of caring and sharing, and just instead of throwing it away, they know that somebody else can use and make stuff of, of this stuff. And it's uh, it's really nice that it's kind of special that people do that. Um, they, they don't typically do that with painters and other things they don't say here oh by the way i've got a whole bunch of tubes of paint or a whole bunch of canvas i, I know other artists do that to for other artists but uh you know your customers in themselves do you have a do you have a fairly steady buying like certain people that buy kind of regularly i have a, I have a fairly large i've been at, at it long enough that i have a fairly large uh, group of customers yeah uh i have people who stop in from ontario and quebec Every year or two, they stop in. Uh, people from BC, Alberta, it, you know, they've yeah. been with me for some of them for decade for decades now. Yeah, and um, I have people in the states that I still ship to. I don't I don't ship much anymore. Yeah, uh, I, I do don't do a lot of online sales these days. Yeah, well, uh, shipping uh, shipping can be a little awkward in some things uh especially when the weight goes up a bit but i guess if you package it properly it's, it's just weight you yeah. put it in a box no different yeah. than shipping an engine part or something people do it every day you know yeah. well i have to i have to drive 30, 30 miles to the nearest post office <laughs> we don't have to worry about right now there's a bit of a strike going on so we can <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. yeah but... you're pure there you're a pure later or ups guy get lost going out to out to your place yeah, there's not much hope of getting UPS out here. <laughs> yeah. Well, they deliver everywhere, but anyway, this is a cool bike. And uh, yeah, I don't know if you can speak to this at all, what's going on with this one. This one's different type of wheels than the other one. A little bit more um, detail, a little bit more detail on this one. Yeah, that one, that one got a little bit more detail, a little more streamlining. I really like uh, tanks are really hard to build on bikes and get them right right uh there if you don't get if you don't get the line right it just doesn't look good right especially yeah, yeah with the bike yeah well this one's 27 inches long so it's it's a serious piece that's for a real bike guy this is really cool yeah you know these kind of remind me of the you know the old days of when they used to do carving of duck decoys they they really got into just kind of the shape of the duck and they didn't get into the huge detailing on a decoy like they do today um and it had a really nice retro look about it like it was they were they were art they were art and i think that's where your stuff is it's, you don't need all the finicky detail to become the bike you know the, the piece it's an art piece 
and that's why I see you're you're probably is it folk art you see yourself or a sculptor? How do you how do you see yourself? There's a guy with a big pile of steel and a welder. Is, is that folk art? Or is that a, <laughs> I, well, I you know what? I think maybe in the early days it might have been called folk art. Um, but I think I think you've moved into more of a representational sculpture of some kind, but in a, in an abstract way, some of it minimalist way. And uh, get your name still has folk art in your Facebook page. So in your yeah, type. since the beginning, it'll probably be there when I die. Yeah. Well, oh, this one is a real racing bike. This one here. That um, was styled after the the early Indian racing bikes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You're you're literally sitting on the engine <laughs> on this on this one. Yeah. And they again, minimal right down on your leg. Yeah, burn your legs on the pipes. Yeah. yeah. The wheels on that are um, rings off of old harness, old horse harness. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. They're actually not oblong like they look because I've had to close cut a little bit and they didn't uh, close cut the shadows out on the wall uh, very well. So they're not, they're round, they're not oblong. So and also it might be oblong too. It might have been banged a little bit, but yeah. I'm seeing there's a shadow in the background there. So, yeah. It's a representation, and in, in all honesty, I don't shoot for perfection. Well, you know, it's it's a it's a beautiful piece of abstract in, in its sense. I mean, this thing's only set 13 inches long, just over a foot long. It's a beautiful scaled size, and I just look at the the repetition of the pipes on the engine and the frame of the bike, and dealing with those verticals and cross pieces opposed to the two circles on each end so this this is a beautiful abstract piece i mean you, you just look at it it's minimalist and it's got a really nice sense and it has a sense of speed without going anywhere it's a heavy bike it's a sculpture but it, it still has a sense of movement and it's just it's, it's sitting there it's a lovely piece rick lovely piece this one we take mama for a ride on this one yeah that was designed after the earlier the uh, early 40s Harley service cars, serva cars. Oh, cool. Yeah. Which they made up until 1952, I believe. Some Harley freak will correct me on that. But <laughs> um, well, well, we hope that they will contact you and contact you about that. Yeah, they're one of my favorite bikes. Um, I build, I think, two of those a year. That's, oh, okay. a, that's the smallest one I've ever built. Yeah, this one is 13 inches long. Yeah. I think the biggest one was about four feet long. Holy smokes. Yeah. No. And the one I'm working on now uh, is going to be about the same, about 40, 46, 48 inches. Holy smokes. That's So where do people put these? In their in their yards? Mm. Usually in my gallery because it's <laughs> well, st stuff like that. Uh, it, it, it sells. The bigger stuff normally just stays here at Keith and Company. <laughs> well, I, hopefully, uh, some people think about that because some of this stuff would really look great in uh, in landscaped areas in their gardens and yards. Actually, uh, in some of the industries, it would look really cool. In some of the uh, motorcycle places, sell that sell motorcycles and things, just 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 for customer con conversations. I think it's really it's really nice to step back and look at um, where, say, motorcycles have come from and you know how they've changed over years but this this really gives you a different feeling uh, especially when the thing is made out of crazy different parts from different things so where do these wheels come from again were they just rings and then you've added uh spokes well, i bought years ago uh at an auction i bought two 45 gallon drums full of old rotten harness <laughs> and I, I dragged it all home and I cut it all up into pieces and got the rings out and uh, the the hames off it. Um, I don't think you've got any pictures of my one of my fish that's made out of uh, out of a ham. Yeah, it's one of my more popular or bigger bigger sellers of the last few years. Right. Yeah. And that's then I good. took all all the leather that I cut away from it and cut it up into smaller pieces and burned it in my fireplace or in my uh, stove in the shop. Love experience feel. 
So the, this is one of the other things. So we just kind of segued from transportation and, and implements to uh, this is probably one of one of many, many fish that you've probably made over the years. This is yeah, uh, fish, are, fish are popular. Who knew, eh? Yeah, who knew fish were popular? <laughs> well, that's for the guys who want to fish, that uh, dream of catching a fish. Uh, so this one is, yeah, it's got a combination of a lot of crisscross of, uh, uh, you know, hashes of, of nails, I guess. Is that what's made that? I have pails and pails of old nails. Yeah. Well, they, good use for them rather than in somebody's tire. <laughs> that's what I say. Yeah, no, it's got a, yeah, 14 inches in length, 24 inches in length. It's a big piece. So it's lovely, lovely, lovely. Yeah, what to do with old pliers. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I like him. He's got a little smile on his face. He kind of reminds me of some of the pieces, the early pieces, and the ones that I showed here just recently with, for some of your earlier pieces from a number of years ago um but it's kind of uh you know i i look at things like this and say how did you how how do you see those things that come out of things like that where you see an old pair of pliers and you say oh i can make this out of them and you strip the hand grip off of them and the rubber and say okay now you've got an old pair of pliers um but i guess over years you know that this will make a beak. This will make a head. Is that how that sort of goes after? Yeah, just... it becomes, it actually becomes difficult to, to try and get away from seeing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And your entire, you, I shouldn't say you are. My entire life is pretty much based up. If I, I walk past a piece of machinery, I take it apart in my head and go, what can I use that piece for? Yeah. No, I, can, uh, I can see that. Yeah. I kind of go through a little bit of that myself with a little bit of some sculpture that I've been doing recently in, in plastics and stuff like that. And you say, oh, yeah, that could make that and that could do that. I think it's 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 a really nice challenge, like, um, to be able to do those kinds of things. It's, it's good for your brain. It's kind of like a, a puzzle. But it's an ongoing puzzle that you can make and you can change the pieces of the puzzle. <laughs> you don't have to deal with this. Puzzle piece that oh gosh that's got to fit in that hole. You you I can always heat it up and bend it and make it fit. Yeah, that's what I like about it. Yeah, you just do that. No, it's so when it comes to scale, is that kind of determined by what you find? Like say, oh, yeah. scale is completely determined by the pieces I have. Yeah. So it's, I, yeah. Yeah, because I, I see it very it varies quite a bit from eight nine inches to twenty. 30 inches in some of your yeah. smaller pieces here. And we're still on the smaller spectrum spectrum there. Right. You, you, you get outside, there's a lot of stuff outside that's, you know, four or five feet tall. Yeah. But it, it looks lovely in a garden. This stuff really does. It does. It looks, it, it looks lovely. It, it, it's sort of like going back to the land a little bit. Like I kind of like the, that romantic idea of if the piece of equipment worked on the land was going to be scrapped, now you've created a piece and it's that put back on the land again in another context. And it's, it's kind of, it's beautifying, but it's also, you, you get people that go along and they can look at things. Oh, that was made from that. And that, some of these guys probably know what vehicles they came off of, you know, they come over and they look at things. Oh, that's part of a Ford, whatever. Right. And they can, they, they can go through the, I guess they're kind of those, I always like conversations. And if your work can create, a story and every piece probably has a story and a conversation in it. And it's probably half of the story is buried with the materials that made it where, where those materials came from. So it's the only time you're actually putting a piece of a Ford with a Chevy and a, <laughs> and an old tractor part. You could, it's this collaging of, of materials. And I, that's the magic of it. I, I, I love the feeling of that. It's fun, playful, um yeah i just didn't think now this one's pretty you know this one's pretty in keeping i mean every kid probably had one of these i mean oh you know. i wish i had <laughs> as a kid yeah i didn't have one with the gear shift but i had one with a banana seat on it and i didn't have a long back on mine i had a short short one hit me in the tailbone every time i got up <laughs> but i i love the banana seat on my bike as a kid and uh, the, the handlebars, I remember buying them at Canadian Tire, going and 
retrofitting my bike, get rid of those other ones and got some handlebars from Canadian Tire and put them on. And uh, I, I think it was, I never got into a motorcycle, but it was as close as I had to having my own Harley with the, yeah, long, with the long bars. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're cool if you had one of those. This one you probably couldn't put up on the back wheels very easily, but you just do the scale of this one. But I think that was half the fun was to be able to ride, you know, three steps before you fell over on the back wheel. <laughs> yeah. No, that's, that's actually part of a whole set. But that's the last one remaining for some reason. Okay. And I did, I did a, uh, a, uh, uh, BMX, that one, and uh, 10 speed. Okay. No, they're very cool, and uh, I mean they're bigger. They're, they're bigger pieces. These things would look lovely in in a foyer on the floor or in your in your office. They don't have to be on a desk or on a on a tabletop. They would look lovely in a, in the man cave, right? You get that. <laughs> I'm always just trying to think where where people can put these things. And I said they are sculpture. You can live with them. You can put them in your living room if you want, or in your office. And uh, yeah, it, it, like I said, when I saw this one, it took me right back to being a kid again. And, and riding my bike. It was fun. This The one on the left looks like a hand grenade with wings. And I just love that. I'm just like, <laughs> and he's he's a bug. That would be my best rendition of a bumblebee. Nice. Okay. Yeah. It, that's made out of old bearings. I see it. And uh, yeah, you could hurt somebody with that. It's heavy. Yeah. But it's it's nice though it's it's you know bees are in i think i think it's one of those the in things um and uh, i think it's no it's it has that and it's about that size it would fit in the palm of your hand short of the leg sticking through right it, yeah. is that about the size of it yeah it fit in the palm of your hand yeah 10 inches in length that's 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 still that's pretty decent size but he's but he would look very nice on a on a in, on a commode somewhere or on a on a desk, and I think I love that. Best use for a pair of vice grips is that fish right there. You go, whole pair of vice grips. A pair of vice grips and two pairs of crescent two crescent wrenches. Holy the body and the tail are, are crescent wrenches. Right. Yeah. No, I, I I like the presentation though too. I mean, really, it it's got a a base that. You know, if they stand up nicely, they sit. And the fish isn't just sitting on your table; it's it's up off out of the ground a little bit. So, so do you do you like the fact that some of the uh, the, the tools have names and sizes embossed in them? That that's well, not always nice. Any, anything that has bits and pieces of writing on it or stampings on it just it gives it it gives a piece that much more um, personality. Yeah. No, I I agree. I just I love that. Yeah, he's this one's been around. He's a warfish. This one. He's yeah. just been... <laughs> well, that's been great. I just I love that, Rick. I mean, it's just been a great talk about some of your stuff. I mean, we could talk all day about pieces of sculpture, but I think it's this is a really nice array of some of your smaller stuff and midsize. And uh, I'm sure we'll we can do it again and get some bigger stuff going on. What do you think, Stephen? You think of that? I liked it. It was absolutely beautiful. I enjoyed all of it. So, yeah, it was very <laughs> cool. So, Rick, here's the $64 million question we ask every artist. And it's amazing how many can't answer it. What's your work go for? So, if somebody saw something they want to buy, so what's like the range from X to Z? Well, <laughs> we have a bit of a variety. We have probably the cheapest piece here is about $35. Okay. And the most expensive one would be about six grand. Okay, so there's a good range. So they can pick and choose, and you'll sh and you'll ship if you don't mind schlepping thirty miles. I'll so. ship the smaller stuff. Okay. If it can go in, if it can go in the in, to the post office, I'll ship it. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anything too big, you got to figure it out yourself. Yeah. It's, it, yeah. It, I'll br I'll bring it as far as Saskatoon type thing. Actually, actually the, the best way to ship stuff like that is if it's put on a pallet, it's the cheapest way. Put it on a pallet and a transport company will come and pick it up and ship by a pallet. If it's not on a pallet, the forklift can't get it, right? Yeah. So if you put it on a strap it to a forklift or a, a pallet. pallet and package it so it's in good shape, a box basically put on a pallet 
and they'll come pick it up like Kindersley Transport or someplace like that. Mm. And they'll ship anywhere. It's relatively inexpensive, really. But it's if you leave it just here, pick this up and go, they want a lot of money for it because then, yeah. they, you know, they don't want to do that. The forklift is the way to go, though, especially on your bigger stuff. It just weighs up hundreds of pounds. So your, your stuff, stuff, your, your I, stuff weighs I, some, some have, has some girth to it. So, yeah, but absolutely beautiful yeah. stuff. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. gorgeous stuff. So appreciate it. You you have a great day. What's left of it? Maybe get just maybe just don't do any snow shoveling today. Wait till it finishes. And uh... <laughs> I um I don't snow shovel a lot. That's why I have a tractor. There you <laughs> go. <laughs> and that's why he makes miniature tractors. You know, for the little yeah, people, exactly. so they can sh they can shovel yeah. the snow. So everybody, thank you for watching. If you want to get a hold of Rick and you can't figure out how to do it, reach us here at the show. We'll put you in touch with Paul or Rick. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe. Tell your friends. Rick, your stuff's absolutely gorgeous. Look forward to having you back. And have a wonderful day, gentlemen. We'll see you all later. Cheers. Yeah, thanks.